Now live on the phone, Republican Congressman Peter Roskam from Illinois 6th District. Congressman, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Mark. Why are jobs such a stubborn problem? Jobs are a stubborn problem because of a failed stimulus plan from a year ago. A lot of us predicted that the approach that the administration was taking was simply putting good money after bad, and we see the results of that now. The uh, administration promised that unemployment was going to peak at 8 percent, and as you just reported, it's actually 9.5 percent. And here's the problem. We're halfway through the tax year, and this Congress has not determined what the tax code is going to be for 2010. So what does that mean for a business person deciding what to invest in? They don't know the ground rules, and uncertainty is as bad as bad news, actually. The other piece is there's economist after economist that will tell you that the higher the national debt goes as it relates to gross domestic product, the bigger the lag on jobs. So we're at now at 93% of our debt to GDP, which is a staggering figure. And according to most experts, that means 3 million folks are going to sit on the sidelines because of the huge national debt that we're accumulating. It's stubborn, but there's a way forward. But unfortunately, with all due respect to the president, this is not the recovery summer that he's been selling. Do you see a double dip recession? I see uh, a lot of uncertainty ahead. I hope we don't have a double dip recession, but I just don't think the president is right when he says that we're headed in the right direction. These numbers continue to, to erode underneath and, you know, 650,000 folks have given up looking for work, which kind of gives a little bit of a bump in these numbers from an unemployment statistical point of view. But they're really, really underperforming. Next subject. You meet next week with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, leading a trade delegation, security, repairing relations. Netanyahu and the president have had a rocky year so far. What are you going to say to him? Well, I, I, I hope that when President Obama and Prime Minister Netanyahu meet in Washington next week that um, there, there is a, a repairing of the relationship. This is a key ally for the United States of America. It's a key regional ally. It's our best friend in the region. And we've got to make sure that we're doing everything we can to support Israel for, for Israel's interests, but for our own interests. And I will be meeting with Prime Minister Netanyahu upon his return. I'm leaving a delegation to Israel. What I'm going to be emphasizing is we want a good relationship with Israel. Um, we have strategic interests, and we also have economic interests. We've just celebrated 25 years of a free trade agreement between our two nations, and it's been a good, good relationship, but incredibly important, particularly in light of the regional threat from Iran and their nuclear program. Peter, briefly, on the flip side, Muslims around the world might say that Netanyahu has been the thorn in the side that has slowed, in fact, even halted peace talks, saying he's not doing enough stubbornly. Well, I would disagree with that. I think that a careful look at what the relationships are like right now in the Middle East would suggest that Israel has put, time and again, they've, they've put deals on the table. For example, they've they withdrew from Gaza, and what did that get them? It got them rocket fire in southern uh, Israel. They withdrew from Lebanon, and what did that get them? It got them rocket fire from Hezbollah on the north. That's not to say that Israel shouldn't be held to account to pursue a peace process, but that does suggest they, sh they shouldn't be pressured to bid against themselves. Congressman, good luck in the Holy Land. Thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, Mark.